everyone welcome again to my channel this is me I'll see your trainer and today we're going to watch another video of a student who did very well in her performance regarding IV preparation and IV priming let's watch together but before we start our video can I ask a favor to please press on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I'm uploading a new video. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Safety considerations. Primary for tubing can be macro drip or micro drip tubing. The drop factor of the for tubing is required to complete the for drip rate calculation. For a gravity infusion, remember to invert all access ports and back check valve. Whilst fluid is running past that location. Perform hand hygiene. This step prevents the transmission of microorganisms. You can also use clean gloves. Check order to verify solution, rate, and frequency. This ensures for solution is correct and helps prevent medication error. Gather supplies, you will need IV solution. Primary IV tubing, the labels for tubing and the bag, alcohol swab, and basin or sink. Remove IV solution from outer packaging and gently squeeze. Check expiry date. Assess for precipitates or cloudiness. Hang IV bag on hook or IV pole in a way that will allow gravity to help you to prime the line. You need to verify integrity of the solution. Note the expiry date on IV bags are reported by month and year. The product is valid for the entire month. Remove primary IV tubing from outer packaging. Remover paper. Move the roller clamp to about 3 cm below the drip chamber and close the clamp. Remove the protective cover on the IV solution port and keep sterile. Remove the protective cover on the four tubing spike. Follow principles of asepsis. Do not contaminate the spike. Remove the protective cover from the IV solution port without contaminating the solution port or spike. Carefully insert the IV tubing spike into the port, gently pushing and twisting. Fill the drip chamber one-third to one-half full by gently squeezing the chamber. Filling the drip chamber prevents air from entering the IV tubing. Only if absolutely necessary. Remove protective cover on the distal end of the tubing and keep sterile. Not removing the protective cover on the distal end of the tubing helps to maintain a sepsis with distal end of tubing over a basin, sink, garbage. Slowly open roller clamp to prime the IV tubing. 
Invert back check valve and ports as the fluid passes through the tubing. Tap gently to remove air and to fill with fluid, inverting and tapping the back check valve. And access ports helps displace and remove air when priming the IV tubing. Once IV tubing is primed, check the entire length of tubing to ensure no air bubbles are present. This step confirms that air is out of the IV tubing. Close roller clamp if removed earlier. Cover distal end with sterile dead ender or sterile protective cover. Hang tubing on IV pole to prevent from touching the ground. Keep the distal end sterile prior to connecting IV to patient. Label tubing and IV bag with date, time, and initials. Label IV solution bag as per agency policy. Do not write directly on the IV bag. Perform hand hygiene before connecting IV tubing to patient or change the gloves. This reduces the transmission of microorganisms. Important note, an IV solutions are considered sterile for 24 hours, an IV solution may be changed if the physician's order changes. If an IV solution has been running slowly and has been hanging for 24 hours, or if the IV solution becomes contaminated. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in my channel, hit the bell so that you will be notified every time I'm uploading a new video. Thank you very much and God bless. Please like and share.